All right, so the goal today is to take something like these. I just dug these up the other day, old horseshoes. This was interesting. I don't know, a tool of some sorts. Um, the goal is to take these items, clean them up, get them back to bare metal, back back to bare metal, so they actually look like something like this. Which these are a couple of horseshoes I cleaned up already. They turn out really really cool when you. Uh, run them through a, uh, electrolysis and get them down to bare metal. So to do that, I know there's a million videos on YouTube on how to do this stuff, but I thought what the hell, might as well be a million and one. So I'm going to show you my method and how I do it. A couple things you're going to need. One, you're going to need some Armor Hammer Super Washing Soda. You can pick this up at your dollar store it's really cheap easy to get um, this basically you, you put inside of your uh, well I'll show you in a minute add it to the water and it, cre it creates the conductivity so the electric runs through the water um, you're gonna need a five gallon bucket like this one if you're gonna do it my way you're gonna need some rebar poles sticks you can buy these at your hardware store Lowe's Home Depot, they're not that expensive. Or you can use your own metal. I'm not going to get into what kind of metal. This is what I use. This seems to work good for me. Works the best for me, so I'm sticking with it. Um, but you can check out other videos. They tell you what not to use. Uh, stainless steel, I hear it is bad, not good to use for various reasons. So I just went the tried and true and got these uh, rebar uh, poles. I think I paid a couple bucks for each one, so it wasn't too bad. And that's the only amount of money I put into it besides the washing soda. So for about 10 bucks, I already had the bucket. That's all I needed. The other things you're going to need to set this up, and you'll see these wires. Um, I created these wires out of an old extension cord that I wasn't using, and I split the the outer liner lining off of it so when you split it you have inside you'll end up with three depending on your extension cord you'll end up with three different cords and you basically splice the ends and you attach them to the rebar the way I, re I attached the rebar is it was pretty simple I took some uh, wire hanger that I had I don't know if you can see it or not on the edge here and snip those pieces off, drill a couple holes through, twist it together so there's a connection, and then I attached my three wires to each one of the wire hangers on the back. So you have a connection from here to here, and another wire from here to here, and another one from this last one over to the other one. You don't connect the, the last two together though. It's important to point that out so make sure one of these is separate so there's no connection between them um, I put mine as close to the edge as I can get them I've already used this bucket so it's still a little wet inside I just emptied out all the other uh, water I had to show you guys how I'm gonna do this one so that's really all you need um, the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a battery charger. One, it doesn't turn off. Now this one I have is die hard, but it's got a uh, two amp slow charge on it that I use. Um, it creates about seven to ten amps as you're doing the electrolysis, and that's what you want, but you don't want it to shut off. If it shuts off, obviously it's not going to work. Some of your new chargers automatically shut off. The final thing I have laying around that I use is I have some old dog wire fence, underground fence that I use. What you use these for is basically to take a screw, drill a little hole into your metal so it's got a real good uh, connection. It won't hurt it because you can always fill it in later. Um, and that way you have a real good connection to the metal and then this stuff, these, these wires will connect to 
the bucket, the rebar, and I'll I'll show you, or I'm sorry, not the rebar, but these connect to the battery, and I'll show you how that's set up in a minute. But it, that's all you need. A couple extension cords, old extension cord, split it, grab the extra wires out of it, some other wire laying around, some hanger wire, a bucket, some washing soap, soda, and a battery charger. So, I'll come back in a minute and show you the next step. All right, I've gone ahead and filled the bucket halfway up with water. I have a little stick here I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start putting in my soap. And you can put in, hello Daisy, how are you? In, you know, put in quite a bit. Mine's actually gotten hard, so I gotta pound it out a little bit. So, because my soap was all hard in the box, I had to pound it out. So, I'm gonna add some in now. So, I'm putting quite a bit in. It doesn't matter how much you really put in, as long as you get enough in there and it dissolves. So, then all I do, stir it up. So it breaks up a little bit. All right, at this point, you can see the water's getting a little cloudy. That's the soap mixing into it. The exact measurement of the soap when you put it in there, I don't know. Um, I've been told to, if you have a five gallon bucket like I have, maybe two cups, two to three. You know, don't, don't be conservative, it won't hurt it. You're basically just putting in something to, to create connectivity or conductivity to the metal. So, as you can see, I put quite a bit in, and it's pretty murky, but that'll settle down. It doesn't matter anyway. It's going to get really dirty and muddy and gross. So, but that's that's what it's supposed to do. It's just soap. That's it. So now I'm going to set up the metal to go in, and I'll show you that in a second. So, now I need to add the metal to the mixture of soap and water, but first, what I usually do is I take a hole, a drill, and I drill a hole into the metal itself so you have a good connection, and then I, to get that good connection, I screw a, a screw in there, that way it's good and tight, and you can see it's in the metal. If I don't do that, See how dirty and muddy this is? Sometimes you won't get the connectivity, conductivity that you want, and all the rust and stuff won't come off. Remember, the goal here is to make that this horseshoe look something like this. Um, so they actually turn out pretty good. And some of the other things I've done, a coal pick before that I've found up in Pennsylvania, that turned out really nice as well as this um, carpenter axe head that we found a few weeks ago. So they really do turn out real nice when you get them cleaned up, run them through electrolysis. But to get there you got to go through these steps. So now I'm going to go over to the water, my bucket. And so you see the water's trying to start to settle down a little bit, starting to clear up. And all I'm going to do is suspend my 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 metal object in the water and it's important to note that you should not touch any of the uh, rebar poles or sticks I actually melted a little niche in here notch or whatever you want to call it so keep your wires from touching anything else and there it's in there it's not touching anything not touching the sides that's where you want to be. Now you can add more pieces of metal. Um, I've actually layered them higher, lower, and 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 depth in the water, so they're not touching um, to get more done. But for this case, I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, and now let's hook up the battery. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and add another piece of metal to my to my uh, horseshoe. Um, I tried drilling a hole in this thing, and man, it was hard. So I'm going to try something I typically don't do. 
I scrape down to what I think is the surface. Hopefully I'm getting it's touching the surface of the metal. And I'm just gonna wrap it around tight so I can suspend it. And then I hope it's tight enough where it's touching metal. Because if I'm not touching metal, it is not gonna work. That is fact. But hopefully doing it this way. Um, it will work. So I got to strip the other end real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. Get up my handy dandy stripper. All right. So now we should be ready to go. We'll go place that in the water. Put that in there as well. Again, so it's not touching. You don't want to touch the rebar. So there, they're both not touching. Run the cable through. Keep them nice and neat. Now what I usually do, is if I have more than one item in and I have more than one wire, I'll attach the wires together. So when I place my battery hookups, it's an easy fit. All right, so now for the battery. It's really simple. If you're using rebar, the, what I like to say is the red clip goes to the rebar, R and R. Red, rebar. There you go. Got that done, that's connected. Black goes on the color of the metal or that you want it to be, so the metal will turn out black. So black on black. I guess that really doesn't make any sense, but oh well. You get the idea. Again, if you don't like my video, there's a million other million other ones out there that talk about the same thing, just different way to do it. I'm just trying to be a million and one. All right, so you got your red on rebar and your black on the metal. You make sure you're on a trickle charge, two amp slow charge for me. I don't know what yours would be, what kind of charger you have. Um, and then you want to power it on, and I'll show you that. So, all right, I've gone ahead and actually powered it up. And you can see you got bubbles coming out from the metal that's what you want to see so hopefully within the next few hours I usually check back three hours three or four hours later to see what's going on and I'll show you what that's what they're supposed to look like when you start seeing black around the edges of the metal then you know it's actually working it's doing what's it's doing its thing but right now it's uh, bubbling so it's working and that's a good thing. All right, I'll uh, check back when everything's just about done. One thing I wanted to point out that I didn't before was, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this, uh, the charge going on, see where it's just at almost 10 amps? That's what you want. You don't want it up to 40, you don't want it, you don't want any more than seven to 10. From my experience, it works good that way. And then there's my, two amp slow charge and that's all I'm doing that's all you need and it won't shut off alright so it's been about six hours I pulled the metal out of the uh, electrolysis and here's what we have just as I thought I wasn't sure if this was gonna work it doesn't look like it did so I must not have been touching the metal enough a little bit of it started to flake off on the ends here. Well, I don't know. Maybe it did work. Anyway, but this is what you should see. See all this black stuff or all the rust? It's really flaking off now. It just really comes off nice. So what you do, like what I do, and depending on your relic, I wouldn't do this with Civil War relics. Just take a brush and start rubbing rubbing off the, uh, the rust. And it comes off really easy, as you can see. And what you're left 
in the end, again, something looks like this. Some people will clean these up with WD-40, even spray some uh, uh, lacquer on them. This, I did some WD-40 to see what they look like, and they're pretty good. I just don't know how long they will last like that without putting a protective, protective coating or something over it. So anyway, there you have it, Electrolysis 101, my way. Um, I'm going to have to do a better job of getting to the metal on this one, I think. But there you have it, pretty straightforward, simple, easy to do. Like I said, if I could do it, you can do it too.